Demeter 1, 2, and 2, and it's list day. Uh, I know it's been a little while since I did one of these. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh's been a little bit trying for me lately. I can't really figure out why. I think it's because uh, every deck I want to play is bad and uncompetitive, and it really just, it really makes you kind of hate playing. I'm pretty sure it was that uh, dual power box that really kind of put me over the edge, where it's like the cards I needed out of it to make my deck work, the deck I wanted to play work, were somehow still way too expensive for me to be worth buying. So I was like, that's it. Even in the reprint box, I can't have what I want, but I'm over the hump, so I'm gonna get back to my videos. So uh, have no fear, I'm not quitting or anything silly. I just needed a minute. And what better way to get back into Yu-Gi-Oh than bitching about a new set? And the set we're talking about today is Dark Neo Storm. More specifically, the worst cards in it. Because why would you ever want to talk about good cards when you can talk about bad ones? Yes, this is going to be the cards that you go to sneak peek and you chuck in the trash can because they're not what you wanted. So without further ado, let's talk about the worst cards in Dane. Number 10. Number, uh... 20? Double X? Utopic Dark Infinity thing. I figured I would put this at number 10 on the list because he's kind of here more due to the fact that he just is unfortunately a rank 10 monster and less to do with the fact that he's not good. He's okay. This Dark Warrior with 4k attack and 4k defense made of 2 plus Level 10 monsters has the following ability. When a monster is destroyed by battle, you can detach material from this card to special summon that monster in defense position. Oh, okay. With 4k attack, he's probably killing stuff, so he's probably summoning back the things that he is destroying. Also, you can just, as an ignition effect, target one special summon monster on the field that you control, gain life points equal to its attack. You can only use its effects once per turn. Okay, so that a second effect is a very dumb way to win in time, I suppose. See, again, I really think the big problem with this card is that it's a rank 10. With something like Gustav Max or Superior Dora in your arsenal of tools, anytime you would make this thing, you'd probably just rather be making the other two. If life points are a concern, you need to win the game to get that uh, end of match procedures. Gustav Max doing 3k burn damage is probably plenty. It's very unlikely that this, this thing is targeting anything on the field other than itself, which it can't do. Yes, you cannot target itself. There's one other. So getting anything more than that 3000 boost is probably unlikely. So basically we just need to look at his stats and his first effect. Summoning back something like, I don't know, Goyo Guardian. Eh is okay. Presumably you'd be using this when one of your opponent's monsters is killed in battle and you're trying to steal it as opposed to when one of your guys is killed in battle and you're just trying to get back on the board, although you could in theory do that. Overall it just seems very lackluster. If anything his best feature is the fact that it's a 4k beater. So if you need to go in for some serious damage uh, via an attack you don't really feel like, you know, putting Dora in attack mode. Okay, this isn't an awful option. And if you have a rank 10, like, package in your deck, I could see running this. It's just, it's very niche in its, in its usage. Number nine is Goki the Solid Ogre. So, I wouldn't be too hard on Solid Ogre Man here. He is in fine company with every other lackluster Goki uh, extra deck monster. <laughs> Gokis are very good at making Link monsters, it's just that their own Link monsters are ironically just not super good. And Solid is Solid is certainly not an exception to that rule. 2400 attack, Link 3 Earth type monster. Not really, uh, not really breaking the bank with that 2400 attack power. Up, down, and to the left. It's a sideways unicorn. Weird arrows aside, basically making him, what, expensive Phoenix or Cerberus? Well, which one's which? I don't remember. But what does he do? Cannot be destroyed by battle or card effect. While it points to a Goki monster. Ugh. Alright, well that's not, that's not awful. Um, I think your Cerberus and Phoenix that I literally just mentioned do much better than this would, and those protect your entire co-linked line, not just himself, so that's... But okay, let's keep going. Once per turn, as a quick effect, you can target one Goki you control, uh, except himself, 
and move it to a main monster zone that this thing points to. Yep, he is a quick effect, you can shuffle crap around. Uh, oh man, would Mech Knights want to use this for anything? What is this made of? Two plus Goki monsters. No, they would not have no way of making it. At least no good way of making it. And they don't... They move themselves anyway, you know, you know, who cares? I don't know, I'm trying to I'm trying to come up with something on the fly is why you'd ever want to do this. Basically, I've had this discussion with you guys before. If you need to move your stuff around in order to properly link summon, that means you probably made a misplay at some point. We have enough varied arrows, and as long as you understand how your deck works and what the combos you're supposed to be doing are, and you tailor your extra deck in order to accommodate various scenarios, you should never really need to move anything. It just overcomplicates a, a bunch of already complicated steps you need to remember in order to make your perfect board. It's just gonna lend yourself to misplaying more. I, I don't know why you'd want to do this. I'm sure there's some cheesy thing you can do with it. Um, it doesn't even want you to target anything. It's gotta be Gokies. I don't know. His self-protection is probably the best part about him. And I guess the fact that you can force his self-protection by yanking a dude and sticking it under him with his other effect is at least he synergizes with himself. Yay! It wouldn't be sneak peek trash can filler without a weird random one-off stupid gamble trap card. It's incredibly disrespectful! Dice it! I don't know what pun they're going for. Like dice it, like to, like chop stuff. It was a G's dice set. Also, not anything. The artwork's like Terror King, Archfiend, and uh, Snipe Hunter. That's the name of that card. In the artwork. Dice set? Like dice roulette? Is that, is that what? It's not a pun though, it's a poor man too. It's not anything. Okay, what does it do? Roll a six-sided die and apply the effect depending on whose turn it is. <laughs> I, I always like RNG with my RNG. Nice. If it's your turn, banish cards from your graveyard equal to the result. And if the result was one, uh, mill what, six cards? Mill six cards from the top of your deck to the graveyard. That's not awful. What happens if you don't have enough in your graveyard? Does it fail to resolve? Ugh, I'm playing too much Keyforge. Just do what you can. If it's your opponent's turn, send cards from the top of your opponent's deck to the graveyard equal to the result. And if the result was six, banish one card from your graveyard. Uh. That's interesting. Potentially you can get a lot of mills out of this card if you play it properly on the proper turn, or if uh, you're playing a deck that wants things banished, like the Grand Magic De Erza deck or something. Obviously this card has some functions, it's kind of a wonky needle bug nest. Uh, it's unreliable, I think, is its worst problem. We have no definite way of knowing what this thing's going to uh, come up as a result because it's a die roll. You're gonna have to assume it's an averaging around three, I suppose. And being a trap card is just really slow. So if you need to, this to like set up your grave or your, or something like or your banish pile or, or something, whatever is that the reason you'd ever want to put this in your deck, whatever that is, whatever setup. It's gonna be probably too slow. Uh, it's a normal trap card. You can trap trick it, I guess. There's always that. Again, it has the potential to make a giant setup play, so I'm gonna put it higher on the list, I guess, but it's just wonky and weird. Uh, next. Overflow Dragon! Here's a weird card. On its surface, it sounds okay, but when you start digging into it, you realize it's overloaded with sh a level 1 Dark Dragon with zero attack and zero defense. Wow, it, this this thing was set up for success. Those That's fantastic typing, stats, everything, so that this thing has all of the support under the rainbow. How, where did it go wrong? When a monster or monsters on the field is destroyed by a card effect, okay, you can, oh, it misses timing. How's a card that comes out in 2019 still miss timing? Why do you, why? You can special summon this card from your hand. Ugh. Okay, so something gets blown up by card effect, nothing else happens, so this doesn't miss timing, and then you can special summon this thing. Cool. If more than one monster was killed at the time of that destruction, you can also summon a token that has like the same stat lines as this thing. You can only use its effect once per turn. They just had to make sure it wasn't broken. Obviously the, the, the biggest reason you'd want to do this is, I don't know, you have a deck that self-destroys, something like True Kings or Cosmos or something, so that you can force its activation and then uh, 
summon it to the field. However, uh, a lot of those scenarios are probably gonna make it miss timing, aren't you? Oh well, no, it's a new chain. Mm, no, depends. Depends on the card, what you use to activate it, I guess. Or against your opponent's ghost, ghost ogre. Maybe the occasional regeki or torrential tribute, dark hole. Slumber's at three, I, I guess. So would slumber make this miss timing though? I don't know. The when you can is pretty rough as it is and they're gonna attach that to a situational activation condition. What was supposed to be a free body to mitigate some sort of board nuke has turned into a, a wonderfully useless brick. Level one, you can make Link Karibo with it if you're forced to normal summon it. But otherwise, it's probably gonna stay in your hand until something else makes it do something, and, in that, and then, then doesn't even necessarily work. So that's just a nightmare and there's better cards in this game that you can run that are just free bodies you can put on board that don't require you to have something else go on. I'm sorry Overflow Dragon, you had a lot going for you though buddy. I'm not going to pretend to know how number six is supposed to function in the deck because I don't know how this deck works and I don't care. Also how do you pronounce this? Dino Wrestler S Escrimanachi, Escrimanachi. Oh boy, I'm trying to read that one from across the room. We'll fix it in post. A 2200 level six Earth, Earth dinosaur. Even dinosaurs. Wow, those stats are pretty lame. Zero defense though. There's some cute things about that, I guess. But uh, okay, so uh, I think this is a link spam deck. I think you're gonna put a tribute summon monster in there. Ew. Okay. What does it do? If you control a Dino Wrestler monster, <laughs> okay, you can normal summon this card without tributes. Oh, nice. Thanks for that one. If I didn't blow my normal summon on getting the guy on board to let me normal summon this thing, sure. During your turn, if your opponent special summons a monster, <laughs> wait, what? Your turn, your opponent special summons. If your opponent activates Call of the Haunted while this card is in your graveyard, you can target a level four down a wrestler monster in your graveyard special summon it and then you can add this thing to your hand it's recursion nice you can only use its effects once per turn <sighs> they're getting really 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 heavy-handed with the once per turns on these bad cards like they really don't want anything to be looping anymore more power to him i suppose honestly uh its biggest problem is the fact that i think his effect is backwards you really should be able to like normal summon this thing without tributes and then, I don't know, the fact that you need to have a guy on board in order to get him on board is really strange. And then the fact that its best effect is actually a graveyard effect means that him being on board after all this work you put in to get him on board doesn't even, doesn't even do anything. You'd rather have him in the grave anyway. So it's awkward. It's like the two effects from two different cards mushed onto one that the deck I don't think actually uses. Because everyone in the chat, in the Discord, that when we were going over the list was like, yeah, no one runs this thing. And I can see why. Its effect is clumsy. Um, why not? Number five is Cupid Dunk. Is that a pun? Or are they just are they are they just so checked out? They just literally described the card. Like it looks like Cupid. He's dunking a basketball. Cupid Dunk. Ship it. Is that a is that a basketball term? A Cupid Dunk? It's not a UA card though. I can tell you that one. Come on, a slam. Welcome to. All right. Cannot be destroyed by battle except by a monster with a higher level. This card would have been okay at the beginning of the game. It is not okay now. Light level 4 fairy isn't the worst thing in the world. 1800 attack? That's okay. That's the best thing for going for it. The real question is, can you kill it with something without a level? Probably not, right? Because it doesn't really count as zero level, but it doesn't have a level, so it can't be considered higher in level. So a Link can't smash over it, or you could just play something that can't be killed by battle at all and not to worry about this ruling headache. Once per turn during your standby phase, you can increase this card's level by one. Ah, see? There's the there's the combo. Let it sit there forever, and it gets bigger and bigger. So, so you, you, after eight turns, nothing can even kill it. Not even... Not even Quasar Dragon thing. This seems like one of those cards that was just like in the bottom of the barrel. They were like, ah, oh, have we made Cupid Dunk yet? Did, did we make that card yet? That's been on like the to-do list for like, tw like tw 20 years. We should probably print it. We should, pro we should probably print it. Drum, print it. They printed it. However, I will say this, in like a sealed tournament, like on sneak peek day or something, 
this thing's probably gonna be a big pain in the butt. Uh, and you know what? In Dual Links, it would also probably be a pain in the butt. So there's always that. Ugh, I gotta pretend like I know what I'm talking about with another deck? Oh no. Number four is Pegasus Wing. Yugi boy. Ooh. I have wings. Ooh. Weirdly enough, it has nothing to do with tunes or Pegasus at all. It's actually that pink haired dude from like the last season. The, the, and like the filler arc. Schroeder? Is this Schro Schro what was his name? The guy with the castle, right? Or was that the kid? The kid at the castle? I don't remember season five. It's the Valkyrie guy. The Valkyrie guy. It's because it's a Valkyrie card. If you have a Union monster in your graveyard, so Chariot, because I don't know why you'd be playing this in ABCs. <laughs> the only, the only Union the archetype has. If you have that Union monster in your graveyard, you can target as many Valkyrie monsters you have on your field as possible, and they can all attack this turn. If they attack this turn via this effect, their battle damage is half. Okay, I'm not exactly sure what you're trying to do with this card. Um, if you have a field full of Valkyries, five monsters on board, and you somehow have not won the game yet, something is very seriously wrong with the game state, and you should not need this thing. There should be something else you can do besides go nag one with a very situational spell card. Also, if your opponent doesn't have monsters and you go to swing and attack, you have to make sure you tell your opponent, I am attacking you directly because you have no monsters, not through the effect of, of, the, of the spell card. In case that wasn't clear. <laughs> so they don't call a judge and try to argue some garbage with you. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like that's like, Val that's like Valkyrie's like lot in life. Just weird judgment calls and stuff. Cause we're like, when, as soon as you were like activate time goddess, everyone's like, what? No, how does that even work? Yeah, uh, what a really strangely out of left field support card. Also, I'm gonna take this time just to rant a little. Um, why is like, you know how we always get like two TCG archetypes? We get like the good one and the bad one. Like it's like uh, UAs and BAs. Basically, we have two, a, a good one and a bad one. Why is the bad one this time around just weird legacy support for uh, one of those hidden arsenal sets? Like, when does that ever happen? This is strange. Then we got like some noble knights last time. It's like they like they didn't know what to pair with dangers, so they're like, I don't know. We have all this like you know make a wish foundation legacy support garbage on the chalkboard back here. We have no idea when we're ever gonna print this crap. Let's just. Let's just throw it in and let us let the danger sets, because we have nothing else planned for the other TCG exclusives. Go for it. You you got it, Jerome. Let's do it. I don't know. It's out of left field, and it's bad. I'm glad we wasted a TCG exclusive slot on this thing. Can I get some UAs in here? If we're gonna if we're gonna make garbage freaking legacy support, at least support at least support my boys, man. Support my boys. They're so bad. They're so bad. Danger, feat of strength, feat spelled with two E's, because it's Bigfoot in the artwork. Cue the men in tights meme. Now that you are here with me, what we have is great strength of feet. Don't follow. I did it. I referenced something. It's an equip spell. You know what? Whenever I was looking at the danger monsters, thinking, oh man, these walking upstart goblins, you know what they need? An equip spell. Cause they stay on board. And they don't just get linked away into stuff. You know, they def they they definitely stay on board. Cause that's how people play Yu-Gi-Oh. They just make Bigfoot and pass, make Jackalope, or sit on it. This has nothing to do with their place. Okay, fine. Equipped to a danger monster. Nice. Okay, fine. It's, it's line locked to their deck. Sure. Who, who cares? The equipped monster gains 800 attack and defense for some reason. And can have to be destroyed by card effects. And can declare two attacks. The only thing it was, they wanted us to be like, they wanted us to like, they wanted like UA power jersey, but in a good deck. So they gave us this thing for a good deck. However, um, the double attack is nice. The 800 damage, who cares? Um, unkilled by card effects. It seems to be a theme, this, this set. Don't know why we're so scared of Regeki. I guess you really needed those uh, those big uh, Bigfoot and Chupacab Chupacabra. Blah, 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 blah. No me gusta las Chupacabra. La Chupacabra. La Chupacabra. Is it fem? I don't know. 
keeping your danger monsters on board only to then swing into stuff with this 800 booster is, is, is it's very very strange i i think we're what afraid of mirror force I, I don't know it's just not what the deck wants to do i don't know why this card exists i'm pretty sure they just wanted to use feet of strength pun and couldn't figure out how to get it on a card so they made a cheesy equip card that no one will play because it wouldn't be a tcg exclusive archetype without a cheesy equip card that the deck doesn't use nice Number two is another trap card. Snowman effect. Snowman effect. Despite the fact that all the snowman eater guys are getting rolled up into a snowball and rolling down a hill and it's snowballing and getting bigger, so it's the snowball effect, not the snowman effect. Moving on. This normal trap card reads Trap Trick Target for the win! Target one face up monster you control. Here we go. It gains attack equal to the attack of all other monsters you control, but it cannot attack directly the turn you activate this card. You can only activate this card once per turn. It's permanent. That's not awful, I guess. I guess the best use for this card would be as like a battle trap. Your opponent attacks into your your guy thinking like, ah oh, man, his dudes are so weak. Uh, I'm gonna get him with my big number double x infinity guy and then smash into it for all the damage and you're like ahaha damage calc and then hit him for a bunch of reflective damage i don't know i guess and then you can attack next turn because it's now a different turn i this isn't the worst thing in the world it's just so so slow and so specific in what it's trying to do It'll never see play. It's probably one of the worst cards in the set simply because it's never going to be put into anything I wish it was at a I wish it was a quick play spell. If it was a quick play spell. There'd be some cheese to be had Oh, yeah, here we go the honorable mention star the star staring starling puns are uh I can't tell if their pun game is really strong this time around or super weak because they're kind of bad puns. There's just a lot of them. Quantity over quality, I suppose. OZG was Witch Starling, which uh, has nothing to do with the card's image. So I guess somehow the TCG localization uh, people got the nail on the head. This is certainly a Starling that is staring at stars. They actually seem to be staring off into space much like the space motif on its stomach. I'm bird watching this card. I'm not actually talking about it. Are those level berries? I want, I, come on, ma. I want my morning bowl of level berries. <laughs> this card is absolutely terrible. However, its effect is at least kind of neat. That's why it's a dishonorable mention. Or honorable mention? Dis I guess it's a dishonorable mention because it's a worst of list. Whatever. This level gains an effect based on which column you stick it in. <laughs> it's one of those. I like those cards. Why do I like those cards so much? They're all so bad. If it's in the leftmost column, it gains like, what, four levels to level four, so it becomes a normal summonable level eight. That's not completely useless. There are better options for getting a free level eight on board for your rank eight plays, presumably. However, it's not, not so dumb. Wing Beast, Wind, its typing is at least appropriate. Could do worse. Rightmost, it gains three. It's a little level seven as well. That's cool. If it's in the center, it uh, it gets two, comes a six. All right. And if it's in those like middle guys, it uh, gets one, so it's a five. If it was a tutor, I think this card would be infinitely better, uh, simply because you know you could summon it anywhere, and then that would make up the difference, and you could pretty much synchro anything you wanted out of your deck. It's actually probably why it's not a tuner. Damn, that would actually be kind of cool. Also, it doesn't have its own special summoning condition, so you're pretty much relegated to normal summoning this thing or cheesing it out with something else, which means it's definitely a combo piece, and it's not really an extender or anything, so it's probably just going to brick. However, I like, I like the level berries. I want dumb level berries. Alright, before we get to number one, as always, our sponsor this video is MetaMats. If you guys want a custom cloth playmat, go to their website and use the promo code TROLL the Meta for like 10% off. It helps the channel. Um, it helps MetaMats because you're, you're purchasing their product. And uh, I would be, I would, I would put my foot out for them anyway because I love their stuff. But anyway, let's keep going. 
Handy Gallop. Handy Gallop sounds like a cowboy stripper name, ma'am. Now all I can think about is pole dancing and asses chaps. Worse. Handy Gallop's a level one. Was it a beast? Yes. It's a level one earth beast. Sweet. With zero attack and zero defense. Nice. Can't attack directly. <laughs> With zero attack, that's certainly a weird restriction to put on this card. What's the rest of its effect do? This thing gains attack equal to the difference between you and your opponent's life points. Wow. If you're in a very, very, very winning position, or a very, 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 very losing position, this thing could have almost 8,000 attack power. That's crazy. Or it could have, like, none, because you saw it too early, and the situation's ridiculously specific for this to be good. Yikes. But it gets worse. If your life points are higher than your opponent's, and that's what's making the difference, you're, you take any battle damage that this thing is doing, instead of your opponent. So, this can't, like, be a win more move. Like, oh, I'm winning, I slap this thing down, and it does, like, an extra 4k damage to, to clean up the game. Nah, uh, no, you have to play it in a losing position in order to get any real advantage out of it. And sure, if you, like, you know, are down by 7,000 life points, this thing is a 7,000 attack thingy, and you could smash into something. Um, okay, uh, the, 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 with a direct attack, the best it can do is tie, right? Yes. So it's not actually gonna ever win you the game in and of itself. You need to be able to be doing something else. However, you certainly could probably come back from behind. Handy Gallop coming from behind. <laughs> And, and hit for, you know, a lot of damage. It's one of those cards where you put it in your deck simply for a losing scenario, which is very poor deck building. However, its effect is so very strange, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a dumb gimmick you can do with this thing in OTK. Um, but otherwise, it's, it's pretty bad. But anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the list. This is my little return to form here. If you guys are enjoying these lists, my main series, or any other crap I do, be sure to check out my Facebook and my Discord. Uh, Discord specifically is where we go over these lists, and if you guys have any input on them, that's, that's the best place to do it, because you can actually help me make the list as opposed to just complain about it in the comments. If you really want to complain down in the comments below, though, Light me up, fam. Do it. Also, check out the Patreon uh, if you ever want to do that. It's really cool because I do host tournaments on the Discord. So if you guys are also a Patreon member, you get into that for free. Otherwise, they're like a dollar entry. So it's really cool. Um, there's other stuff you can do. I think I got the... What else is down there? Uh, I think I got the MetaMask link down there. Just check it out. Check it out sometime. Just, just check it out. Just, just, you know, just, go, just go check it out. It's, it's definitely cool. Remember, guys, if you don't troll the battle wheel, I will see you guys next time. Wait just a moment. I can see you were about to click the subscribe button. Was I right? Tell me I was right. I was right, right? My Millennium Eye lets me see everything, including these other videos by Davy Boy. Don't be a stranger. You will always be welcome in my Toon World.